mighty a hole for kicking my ex out of my house right before Christmas and suing her. My ex and I divorced about 15 years ago, and we have shared custody of our daughter. In the divorce, she wanted a house, but I fought hard against it because it's been my family home for three generations before I inherited it. In the end, we came to a compromise that was signed off by the judge. Basically, she gets to live in the house rent-free until our daughter turns 18, then I get it back. I had to pay the utilities, maintenance, and property taxes the entire time. In addition, she can't make any modification or upgrades to the house without my written permission. She is solely responsible for the cost, and work has to be performed by an insured and legally licensed professional. I've been sending her move-out notices for months in anticipation of my daughter's 18th birthday and recently that came to pass. The day after, I showed up to the house with a contractor because I wanted some work done before I moved back in. At first, she refused to let me in until I reminded her that I'm the legal owner of the house. According to our divorce agreement signed by the judge, she's no longer allowed to be there and I'll call the police if she doesn't let me in. She got a point and opened the door. I was surprised nothing was packed and it didn't seem like she's moving at all. We were arguing as I walked through and inspected my house. She wanted extra time and I told her to be out by the end of the week or I'll have her stuff thrown out. When I walked into the living room, I was shocked into silence. The living room was expanded by a wall being torn down and having the bedroom that was once there merged into it. She turned my four-bedroom house into a three-bedroom one. I know I didn't sign off on this. And from the looks of it, the work was probably done by her boyfriend and not a professional. I yelled at her and told her I'm going to sue her for everything she has. Then I left. She went crying to our daughter and my family. Now everyone is telling me to give her another month to find a place and not sue her. My daughter is firmly on her mother's side and thinks I'm the a-hole for kicking her mother out a couple of weeks before Christmas and suing her. This is why I'm here. I think I'm right and legally I am right. But my daughter's opinion of me matters to me. Am I the a-hole? Added to answer common questions. My daughter is a freshman in college and I rent her an apartment near campus where she lives by herself. She has a room in my house, and I assume we'll have a room wherever her mother lives. Two, my ex fought for the house and had a chance of winning, even though we had shared custody because I make much more than her. I offered her to compromise, and she took it because her attorney told her it was a good deal, and there's an equal chance I could win, which would leave her without a house. Three, my relationship with my daughter is good. She didn't tell me about the renovation because early on I told her I don't want to talk or hear anything about her mother unless it's something that's affecting our daughter negatively. My ex was dead to me and I wanted to spend time with my daughter building new memories. Now for the top comments. Not day whole. The rules for this arrangement could not be more clear. Let's not even talk about the removal of a wall. Can actually cause structural problems. I would get a structural engineering inspection on the entire property to make sure the lawsuit includes everything. And goddamn was the judge unfair. Why the heck is she allowed to live there in the house rent-free for 15 years? Why? Just because she gave birth to a kid she gets a home for free? Not day haul. Christmas is a day. She intentionally messed up the value of your house without your consent against the judge's orders. Sue her. Not day haul. She has known for 15 years that when your daughter turned 18, she was to move. Her lack of planning is on her. It's absolutely ridiculous that she didn't have a plan to be out by the daughter's birthday. Exactly this. She didn't bother planning ahead because she thought Opie wouldn't go through with it because of their daughter. And now she's using the daughter to manipulate him and keep on living on his expense. Not a whole Opie. You should talk to your daughter and explain your side of things, especially if your ex has been filling her head with lies or has been putting her against you. Because why would she hide or not mention the renovations otherwise? Maybe wait until after the holidays, but definitely sue her and kick her out. Next story. Would I be the a-hole if I, 27 female, didn't give my friend, 31 female, who's going through a divorce, the keys to my house while I'm on holiday? My friend Anne and I are co-workers and almost neighbors. She lives only 10 minutes away from me. For context, I moved where I am now living alone after I ran away from my horrible ex. It took me months to find an apartment. And I left when he wasn't home. Anna decided to divorce her husband. He's a nice guy. That's what she's saying. But she says they are too different. She started sleeping around and he doesn't know before handing him the divorce papers. But as far as she is saying, they stopped talking weeks ago. They're still living together until March. But she obviously wants to move away ASAP. 
I ask her if he is acting okay towards her, if he's not hurting or harming her, and she said yes, but he is very hurt. Since I'm in my home country over the holidays and probably even longer, working remotely there, she hinted at my giving her a key to my flat so she can get away from him. She said she would pay anything to do that. To be fair, I don't want someone with a dog to live in my flat while I'm away and bring over guys to my bed. Anna's clean, reliable, and I would absolutely host her if her ex-husband became dangerous or while I'm not away, though I have one room. On the other hand, I wish I had someone to offer me their flat when I was desperately searching for one to get away from my ex, but I was new in the country and didn't know anyone. Would I be the a-hole? Not the a-hole. Your friend does not appear to need a safe space to get away from him. She just wants a place to bring her hookups to. The last thing you need is a bunch of people knowing where you live and showing up there looking for hookups from another woman. New fear unlocked. Her husband might also become angry with you if slash when he finds out about her infidelity because in his eyes, you'd have been giving her access to your flat so she could hook up with people. It would put you squarely in the middle of their situation. Put simply, Anna has no respect for her husband, the man she married and is supposed to love. Do you think she'll respect you and your space? She is a grown woman. She can find a place to live that doesn't involve her having complete strangers in your home. Outside of the risk to you, what if they steal your things? Trash your flat. Do you really want to roll the dice on that? Not the a-hole. Make sure Anna doesn't have any access to your flat. Not the a-hole. Don't do it. When you get back, getting her out may not be easy and end up ruining your friendship. Tell her that you value your friendship too much to risk it this way. She will have something for herself in March. I wouldn't worry about it, but good point otherwise. Not the a-hole. Helping someone leave a dangerous situation is entirely different than wanting to leave your husband because you're done being married. That's the one and only thing I'm afraid of. That her ex is dangerous and she hides it from us. I didn't cheat on my ex, but when he became violent, I didn't tell anyone until much later. Even today, no one knows all the details. I was afraid he would find out I told everyone because we were still living together. Not your issue. The best case scenario is that you come home to a pad smelling of sex. The worst case scenario is she will stay there until March and force you to evict her. Next story. Am I the a-hole for asking my cousin for the wedding gift back after she said I wasn't welcome at the reception? Plus mini update. My 20 female cousin Isabel, 26 female, is getting married in January. I chose a set of Royal Albert plates from the gift registry, and they've already been delivered. The invitation said the ceremony would be first, followed immediately by meals, and guests would start making their way to the reception hall. Invitation also said to be prepared for a night of drinking and dancing at a reception. Then, a couple of days ago, Isabel called me. We made some small talk. She then said she wanted to call just to confirm I knew the reception was more for partying, and it isn't really suitable for me considering I'm not even 21. I said I'm fine drinking water and soda, but she replied the capacity for the reception hall is smaller, so they're not including younger guests. Mind you, this is a child-free wedding, so there aren't really any younger guests, and I get not wanting to have kids around for the reception. Isabel said I'm invited to the ceremony and dinner. I was confused and told her this is really weird. The invitation said ceremony and reception. She replied she's sorry for the misunderstanding, but it said there would be drinking and stuff. Eventually, I told her, okay, I respect that, but if she could kindly send the plates back so I can get a refund. Isabel asked why, because I'm going to be there for the most important part, and they've included me in the catering. I said I was expecting to attend the entire wedding, not half, and I bought the gift based on that. I might not attend at all now, so she needs to send the plates back, and I'll decide another suitable gift if any. She said no one takes back gifts, and it's not like I'm uninvited. If I don't want to come now, that's on me, and I've already gotten a gift. I also got a text from my other cousin, Isabel's sister, that I'm making a scene. She's 19, by the way, and attending the reception. I know another cousin the same age as me is attending the reception, and I think Isabel's talked to other relatives about it. My fiancé thinks I'm okay, though. So was I the a-hole asking to return the plates? Now for the top comments before reading the updates. Not the a-hole. You were uninvited. Of course you're free to request your gift back. Classy? Probably not, but that's not the bride's theme anyways. The bride uninvited her from the reception? 
so Opian invited her as a gift receiver. And her reason was also so meh. What about the dolls that don't drink? Does she throw people from the reception that aren't at least some intoxicated after one hour? Not the home. She is disrespecting you. You are an adult, not a child. And her sister who is younger than you is going. Yep, it sounds like she didn't plan her wedding well. And probably planned for more no RSVPs than yeses and is now trying to backtrack because she didn't get a big enough venue. It's one of the first big decisions you have to make. Same as making sure there's an indoor option if you plan to have your wedding outside. Example, we plan on inviting around 100 people to our wedding and ask venue about capacity, parking space, seating, etc. They said they've had up to 300 cars. Obviously, we're expecting nowhere near that many people, but it made sure we didn't have any potential issues. Like what I suspect is happening with your cousin, not the a-hole. Don't invite people if you don't want them to attend. And her excuse is BS. You're 20, not 13 or 15. Plenty of 20 years old hang out around 21 to 23 year olds because it's the same age group and she's your cousin. So I'm sure you've seen each other at family events if you live close to each other. Not stay home. If she didn't want younger aged people during reception, then she should have informed you before. But she didn't. You gave the gift on the basis that you're attending the whole wedding. Since she can suddenly uninvite you from reception, then you can also ask for your gift back. To be honest, I feel like she wanted the gift before rejecting you. Sorry, because I always think of the worst reasons for things happening. But whatever it is, you are absolutely right in wanting your gift back. But your relationship with her might be damaged, so be ready for that. I don't even think she thinks much of the relationship between you and her, since she is uninviting you from the reception but not giving a proper reason other than your age, and also acting salty about returning the gift. Edit. I have a small update. I just got off the phone with my mom, because I wanted to ask her if they'd picked a gift for Isabel yet. Otherwise, they can potentially take mine and the whole situation. She said Isabel called her too, and said they're welcome to the ceremony, but the reception is more for friends and partying. My parents are definitely above 21, and they also had ceremony and reception on their invitation. Parents were planning to gift money, so they haven't given it yet. They think it was really rude of Isabel to invite then uninvite. And they might not attend a ceremony, but not sure. And I am officially confused. Why not just have ceremony in our invitations in the first place? Last story. Am I the a-hole for causing my ex-girlfriend's father to lose his job? A while back, I, 40s male, dated a woman, 30s female, whose father, 60s male, was a nice enough person, but a bit overprotective of his adult daughter. After about a month of dating and without any reason to do so, he ran a full background check on me, including a credit check, without my knowledge or permission. It came back clean and my girlfriend told me about it immediately after the fact. I noticed a 5-point hit to my credit rating but that wasn't a big deal. I was more peeved that someone ran a criminal at a financial check on me without my knowledge or consent, but I decided to let it go to keep the peace. We broke up three months later and had little contact after the breakup. Approximately two months after we broke up, my now ex-girlfriend reached out to me. It turns out her father ran the background and credit checks through his work. He hired employees, so he had access to his company's system to run the checks. He digitally clicked that I had granted consent to the checks, but of course I had not done so and he had no backup. His company's internal audit department was giving him a hard time to provide a backup. She asked me to complete and retroactively date, sign and email a form consent to the checks to her. I was still a little peeved about the checks, so I declined to do so. She went nuts, and her father even called trying to explain his position. He was much nicer about it than her, but I still declined. Ultimately, the internal auditor for my ex's father's company called the follow-up and determined what happened, and I told the auditor the entire true story. And my ex's father lost his job. He was close to retirement. But I know I set him and his wife back a bit. She occasionally lashed out via text for a month after calling me an a-hole. It was a relatively minor inconvenience to my life, and it did cost him a lot. So I ask you Reddit, am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. He misused his position and got himself fired. Yeah, this is a huge breach of ethics and a massive liability issue for his company. Opie may have been nice enough to just tell the internal auditors the truth, but he would have been well within his rights to pursue legal action over this. He deserved to be fired for violating people's privacy just because he felt like it. 
The vast majority of people don't have access to these types of systems, and they still have romantic relationships without needing to background check people. Overprotective is one thing, but this is another matter entirely. OP, if you're feeling guilty over this, think about the fact that if he hadn't gotten caught, he probably would have kept doing the same thing to other people. Maybe his daughter's next boyfriend, maybe a new neighbor, maybe a stranger who he just doesn't like. Some of them might have been negatively affected by the credit score hit. Others might have something in their background that he could use to blackmail them or destroy their lives. You are absolutely not the a-hole. Also, now that her father has been fired, he can be a cautionary tale for his former co-workers who might be considering doing the same thing. Whereas if he got away with it, he'd be an example of being able to get away with it, which would only encourage co-workers to do the same thing. I've been at my job for 19 years. Despite having been there for such a long time, I am 100% aware of what things are ground for immediate dismissal, and I don't do those things. In fact, we take yearly training on things like protect people's personal identifying information. There's no way that Dad didn't know. He got himself fired for looking up someone's PII without their consent. There was even a checkbox he had to check that said he was doing it with consent. He did it to himself. Why he thought it was worth risking his retirement over? Well, now he'll have plenty of time to think about that. For crying out loud, criminal records are public. If he was concerned about that, he could have paid $20 to look those up online, on his personal machine, and not gotten in any trouble at all. Dad lost his job in retirement because he couldn't spend $20 of his own money on something that wasn't his damn business anyway. Opie is the victim, not Dad. Dad fooled around and found out, not the a-hole.